Dashboards and Maximizer are usually located here at the top of the modules list. Let's take a look at where they come from so you can understand what they are and then how to create them. If we're over in the address book module, let's assume that we have four account managers or sales reps and we want to know what the dollar value is of the opportunities each one of them is responsible for in this quarter. To determine that, we go to the opportunities module and we begin by creating a search in advanced search and add the search criterion and we select close date. We click OK and then underneath rolling date range we select current fiscal quarter and we click OK and we click OK again and OK again to execute the search. Once we have the search results we can sort by rep which is the opportunity leader to get an idea of how each rep is doing. Now that we've tested the search, we go back to Search, Advanced Search, we retrieve that search, and we catalog it. In this case, we've called it Pipeline Current Quarter by Team. By the way, if you're not completely comfortable with how to do this search in Advanced Search, be sure to watch the video on performing advanced searches. Now, it's one thing to look at a list like this, but it can be a lot easier to get your mind around this kind of information if you can get a picture of it instead of just a list. That's where dashboards come in. So let's create a dashboard that will give us a visual representation of the results of this search. We begin by flipping back over to the Dashboards module and clicking here on Dashboard Wizard. We click Create a New Dashboard, click Next, and give this new dashboard a name such as this current quarter opportunities. We also put a check mark here so that this dashboard will be available to us for mobile access on smartphones and tablets. When we click Next, Maximizer expects us to name the indicator that will be the visual representation of that search we just did. We will name this indicator Opportunities by Opportunity Leader and click Next. We'll select the pie chart as the visual representation we want and click Next again. This screen here is where we start to make the determination of what's going to be used to build this indicator and how we want it to appear to us. We begin by selecting Opportunities and selecting the search that we did, which was Pipeline Current Quarter by Team. In our next screen, we select the primary field as Revenue and we click the function as sum. We click next and we select that we want to group this by opportunity leader. In our next screen we make that same selection again to sort by opportunity leader and click next one more time. In this screen we're instructing Maximizer to give us the list that is the data upon which that indicator is built. And we click next and we say I'm done. Let me take a look at my dashboard we click Finish, and there we are. Now that we have a dashboard with at least one indicator, look at what we can do. We can click on any segment of this pie, and Maximizer will let us drill down to the entries that are represented by that slice of the pie chart. If we go back to the dashboard and click anywhere that's not within the pie, Maximizer will drill down and show us all the entries that are represented by that pie chart in that indicator. What that means in practical terms is that we can build a dashboard indicator based on any safe search we create in any of the principal modules, address book, opportunities, customer service, or campaigns. We can even create dashboards for activities and quotas, although the process is a little bit different. Let me show you quickly what I mean by that. I'll go back to dashboards, to the dashboard wizard and I'll indicate that I want to create a new indicator. When I click Next, I'll give it a name, Tasks by Completion Status, and when we go to our next window, we'll select the bar chart, click Next, and this time yes click Activities. You'll notice there's no drop down arrow available for Save Search to use. We'll go Next, and this time we'll select Hotlist Tasks. We'll select All, Complete, and Incomplete, and we'll leave the rest as we see it, and click Next again. 
Since there is no selectable primary field, we'll click Next and we'll group by Completed. We'll click Next one more time and again select Completed. Then when we go to Next, you'll notice there is no click-through available because we haven't built this upon a saved search. We'll simply click Next and click Finish to be able to see this particular dashboard indicator and it'll look like that. Now let's build another indicator, again using the dashboard wizard. We're going to base this on the new process structure in Opportunities and we're going to call it Opportunities by Process and click Next. We'll select the bar chart again, we'll click Next, we'll select Opportunities and we'll use the same save search we used before, Pipeline Current Quarter by Team and click Next. Once again, we'll select Revenue and once again, we'll select Sum and click Next one more time. We're going to Group by Process. After we click Next again, we're going to Sort by Process as well and click Next one more time and again have Maximizer build a list for us to review later. We'll click Next and ask Maximizer to show us this new indicator. As we scroll down, there it is. Finally, let's build another simple indicator and we're going to call this one Total Projected Sales by Quarter. Click Next. Select this kind of a gauge indicator. We'll go Next. Again, we'll be looking at Opportunities. We'll be using the same search that we've used before. When we click Next this time, once again, we'll use Revenue. We'll use Sum. Click Next. And we'll have our click-through prepared for us. We click Next and Finish. And now we finally have this one last little indicator right here. Once we have our dashboard and all the indicators that we want in place, we can modify our indicators and we can also customize them like this. I can take this indicator right here, for example, right click in it, and I have a chance to change how I view it. For example, I can display this one horizontally. I can come over to Metrics. I can use the gradient. I click OK and I get this type of a representation which is a little bit easier to read. In order to make it even easier to read, I can actually grab the lower right corner of it and expand it a bit. When I come down to this one here, I can right click on it, I can change my indicator type perhaps to something that looks a little classier like that, click on the gauge settings and tell it to display the currency symbol, click OK when I'm done, and I get this type of a view here now. Once again, I can expand this indicator just a bit to make the whole thing a little bit easier to read. I can also grab any of these indicators and relocate them. I'm also going to simplify them just to make them a little more readable. This task by completion date, I will right click, I'll come to settings, I'll display horizontally, keep it in 3D. I will also remove the legend and click OK. Now it's considerably easier to read. I'll do the same thing with Opportunities by Process. I'll right click, go to Settings, remove the legend, display horizontally, and click OK. At any time I also have the opportunity to go back to the dashboard wizard itself, accept the changes I've made to layout, and click here to edit an existing indicator. Then when I click Next I can pick any of the indicators that I've created and I can rethink how I structured them and maybe make changes that might be more informational for me. Dashboards are useful for anyone who wants to know how things are developing in real time, which areas are doing well and which need attention, and how tactics and resources might be better adjusted and better allocated. At the end of the day, a picture is indeed worth a thousand words. So go paint yourself a picture of how things are going in your company. Bye for now.